everyone, welcome to my review of the Kato model of the E3-1000 Yamagata Shinkansen Tsubasa. I won't try to repeat that again, but this is the Tsubasa, T-S-U-B-A-S-A, -S -S Shinkansen E3-1000 model uh, from Kato model number 10-222. This is a uh, model I recently acquired. It's the newest addition to my fleet from the Japanese side of the world. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you can tell, it comes in Kato's fantastic um, slip sleeve bookshelf design packaging, which is frankly just outstanding. I mean, really, if you think about this design, you can stack it laying down, you can stack it standing up, you can stack it sideways, upside down, whatever you want to do with it. It's a fantastic design. And you compare that, for example, to a typical Minitrix design, which is a box. You can't really stack it like this because it's kind of loose and it'll fall out and it's an odd shape. It's not standardized shape. So you really have to stack it flat and because they're all different shapes and sizes, they're annoying. So I love what Kato, Tomix, uh, Micro Ace, and the other Japanese manufacturers have done by really standardizing on this design and I, I think it just is super cool and frankly since you can stack them up in a bookshelf, how neat is that? So anyway, let's go ahead and open it up. We open up the snap here and if you haven't had the pleasure of one of these cases, you can just see how cool it is. As you open it up, you'll see a fairly typical layout. You're going to get your instructions and parts manual. It's going to be protected by a sheet of uh, plastic here, a little bit of bubble wrap. And there, of course, set that aside, there, of course, is our model, all nicely packaged in this uh, urethane-type foam. Um, as you can tell, it's a, it's a seven-car set. Um, take out this little insert so you can see the whole thing. Um, it's got two cab cars, one here on the bottom, one on the top, then all the intermediary coaches with one of these being the motor car. I believe it's this one, but I can't tell just by looking at it right now. Um, really nice model. It's a, it's a model of a JR East train. So, uh, and I believe they, they, from what I understand, they've been operating in reality since about 1999. Um, it is a Shinkansen model, not one of the, the more typical common designs, but a little bit more unusual. And uh, it was a gift to me, and I love it, and uh, I think it's just fantastic looking. So I'm excited to get it out and get it running and take a look at it. Let's pull out a few cars and take a look at the train. Take out, first of all, one of the, the cab cars. Set that aside for a moment. And because it's a dummy, it's going to roll away, so I'll have to watch that carefully. One of the coaches. And I'm hoping I get to the motor car here. Oh, that's the motor car. So let's just take out those three for the moment. Put the case away. Look at that. It wants to go already. And there we have it. There's the cab car. I'll bring this a little bit closer to the camera. But of course it's going to be dark. So let me reposition the camera real quickly. So here we have removed from its uh, wonderful packaging the E3. Tsubasa Shinkansen and uh, looks great. It looks terrific and uh, again as typical with Kato there's a lot of little details picked out and they're outstanding state-of-the-art detail and production methods so uh, terrific work Kato. I'm not sure at Ricato. I need to start pronouncing it correctly. I've pronounced it Kato for years I think like a lot of folks but apparently the appropriate and correct uh, pronunciation is Kato. Um, I gotta get used to that. I'll probably never get it right. One thing interesting, I wasn't really sure if this is correct or not, but I noticed the the, the pantographs are pink. Uh, and there's lots of little pink details, so perhaps that's correct. Um, I was surprised to see pink. I need to go check out some prototype photos and, and see if it truly is pink. Um, very interesting and certainly colorful. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on the detail that Kato has put into this because it's it's ex you know exceptionally high standards uh, for what Kato is known for producing these days, um, and everything looks terrific on this model. Um, just looking at the, I love how the, uh, I don't know how well it comes out in the, the video, but just looking at the cab, you see the, the smoke glass window, but then there's also the dark, what would I guess be black painted, metal or whatever the frame's made out of there. It just looks fantastic. Now this model by Kato also has the other benefit. 
in addition to having the standard five pole motor um, traction tires and and um, I believe it has traction tires uh, actually it doesn't appear to have no any traction tires interesting um, in addition to the standard five pole motor though however it is supposed to be DCC ready now I've converted uh, a couple of Kato trains to DCC the old-fashioned way. This will be the first time that I've had to actually install decoders into a DCC ready uh, Kato train set. And it uses Kato's uh, decoders, the um, I believe these are the FL FL, sorry I'm, uh, my mind's blanking on what these are. These are the FL 12's and these go in the cab cars. As you can see it comes in a nice little plastic case. There's your little decoder. Very unusual, different from what most decoders look like. A unique design for Kato. And they also use a different decoder. These are you know, essentially your functionality decoders for your cabs and, and your lights. And then for the motor car, which is a coach car, you have this decoder, which is again another unusual design. Certainly different than the NEM651 NEM six pin plugs we've seen and a very unique design from Kato. I'm going to take that out and take a closer look at it. And what's important, what I've discovered already about this, is that it's important to understand the orientation of this uh, motor decoder, which is, uh, by the way, the EM13. And on one side, you're going to see little short brass strips on the t on the prongs or tines or whatever they're called. On the other side, very long, running the full length of the decoder brass strips. And it's very important because this side contacts the brass strips inside the motor car coach, whereas these smaller pieces go between the motor and these ones. That's your crucial cutoff point or interruption point when you convert to DCC is separating the the pickups from the motor. And this is the piece that does it. These uh, little cab car decoders should be fairly simple to install. One of the, the nice things about this is you don't have to take off the shell and really just opening it up. You can see here there's a little bit of a, uh, a um, an opening here and you just press down really, doesn't take much effort at all. And you see there's a little socket in there or gap in there where the decoder would go. In fact, uh, I can put it in right now. I just need to brush up and make sure I'm doing the right thing because it does not come with instructions on how to install them. But this white plug does need to come out. Let's try and take it out and see how easy it comes out. Okay, that was, oh, it started to come out really easy. There it is. So there it is. And I believe there is an important orientation for how the decoders go that you'll notice this decoder has two solid uh, contact points on this side let's call those the wings and I picked up most of this information from the Japanese N-Scale forum, JNS forum uh, and I highly recommend it to you if you haven't already been there because they're going to cover a lot of this material and that's where I got all my information. So that's one side. On the second side you're going to see two contact strips on each wing. You're also going to see on this decoder um, that there's different uh, tabs on each of the ends and that's important because when you put the decoder in you'll want to put it in essentially opposite of each other so that you can have uh, one so that the, the lights alternate when, whichever direction you're going. I'm not sure if that made sense, but uh, hopefully when I install it, it'll, it'll be a little bit more clear about what I'm doing. So I'm going to set this down, uh, and we'll insert it into the locomotive in just a second. You take your decoder, with, and you want to install it with the, 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 two, the, the, the side with the pads. It has two contact strips on each wing. So there's a total of four contact strips visible facing down, facing you right here. So just sliding right this. The side you don't want to face down is this side, which has this single contact strip on each wing. Um, and in fact, on this locomotive, you can't because you'll notice that little um, circuit board there uh, won't allow it to fit in there because of the, the plastic shell. So I found, and I've done a couple trials at this to make sure I can insert it. It actually doesn't need to be forced in, but it is fiddly, of course. I'm going to try to move it so you can see the light. What I found is actually pushing down on an angle on the bottom strip 
and slightly pushing, whoops, not put, not setting it in like this and trying to slide it forward. I found that didn't work and I tried to, with greater and greater amounts of force and it didn't work. But you kind of got to put a little bit of pressure down uh, to push, the push. what you're doing essentially is putting these contact strips between this brass, this contract rail and another one that you can barely see the, the tip of right here. I'm not sure how well that shows up in the video. Anyway, there's uh, there's two strips in contact right here, and you're going to insert this decoder to go, come between them. So let's go ahead and try it, keeping in mind the orientation of the decoder, because one will be forward and one will be reverse on each car. So here we go. I'm going to try to put it in the way I described. Oops, that's not what I described. I had it several, I did this once already and it was really easy and I did it another way and it was really hard so hopefully this will be one of the really easy versions to show you how it works like I said it's really fiddly this is all part of the review though folks there we go a little bit weird going in there I kind of went on an angle Put it, <laughs> that's very strange yeah, I'm not sure if I broke something or not that time but it should not sit in an angle <laughs> So let's pull it back out, straighten it out, and get it back in there. There we go. I'm not sure if that's incorrectly. There we go. That looks more appropriate. So I'm going to put it in. Now, one thing that the the, the post by Captain Oblivious on JNS Forum does say is that, despite the fact that it's in there tightly and securely and snugly, and it feels like it's it's forward where it should be, they're a little bit fiddly. They're not exactly. Um, as easy as they'd like to be. So I'm going to go put this on the track and test to see if I've got it positioned correctly and then come back and let you know the result. So the good news is that I've got it in there correctly because the lights do work when I put it on the track. The bad news is there appears to be some problem with the brass contacts and this was again something that was addressed mostly for the EM13 going into the motor car but it's something I've uh, discovered there's not good contact somewhere when I first set it on the track with very light pressure like that the lights will light up. Then when I set it on the track, the lights go out. So I've got to do some adjustments here with the contact strips to get them to work properly. For now, I'm just going to put this hatch back on, set it aside, and move on to the motor car. So for the motor car, we're going to install a different decoder. This is the EM13 from Kato. Um, and it, obviously it's a completely different shape uh, compared to the cross shape um, outline of the uh, function car, uh, function decoder for the cab cars. This one is interesting to note that it has a short uh, contact strip on one side and long contact strips on the other side and this is important and it was an important distinction made about how to install and orient the decoder correctly in the motor car when you install it. So one side has long contact strips going the length of the decoder, the other side two short ones just on the ends of the little ends of the little forks. So I'm going to set this down, set this aside, that's the EM13. Here's the motor car. Um, again, nice job by Cato that you can't see the motor in there, but nevertheless there is a motor in here and if you flip it on its back, if you're ever curious, the car with the gears between the wheels is where the motor is. Um, and also I'm noticing at this time that this car does not have any traction tires on it, so I was actually surprised by that, but uh, perhaps um, something I need to think about is how many of my Cato and Tomics and other trains actually do have traction tires. Because, um, perhaps it's not common with Japanese the way it is with European manufacturers. Anyway, here's the motor car. Rather than taking off the shell, at least as far as I understand right now, to install the decoder, you're going to take off the bottom. And this is a new one for me. I've never done this before, and it took me a while to figure it out but there's a little arrow here. I don't know if you can see it on the video. And what you want to do is slide this bottom piece forward just a bit, just applying a little bit of pressure. There we go. So I just pushed back here and I can feel it come loose. Let's see if it slides out. I'll grab it with the tweezers, it'll be easier. Do the slide back. There we go. And there it goes. And you can see you know, how it slides out. It's just got a couple of prongs here with catches that, that hook onto the bottom of the chassis and you slide it forward and it comes off. So we'll set that aside. We'll take a look at the bottom of this motor car. 
and depending on how good the light here is on this video, um, you can see on, on one end of the motor car, first of all the flywheels, the five pill motor, um, you can see on one side there's some uh, metal part of the chassis surrounding this axle that goes to this bogey, this set of trucks. Uh, contact strips back here on both ends. And these are the contact strips that contact the wheels which get power to the motor. And what you want to do in any DCC install, no matter if you're using a plug-and-play 6-pin NEM651 decoder or you're hardwiring it, is you need to interrupt the power from the track that goes to the wheels that goes to this circuit board, circuit strip, brass contact strip, <laughs> I'll figure out what to call it. You want to interrupt the power from here going to the motor because in between here and here you're now going to in input the decoder to interrupt that digital signal, that power signal and take control of the locomotive and tell the motor what to do digitally rather than through the voltage coming through the track. Hopefully that made sense. Now what I need to figure out is how do I get this decoder in here with that blue axle thing in the way. It's fairly straightforward and it was clear on the on the forum uh, guidance that I got that it goes in here somewhere but we have to take this truck off which is connected to this axle and I want to make sure I do that very carefully because taking off a truck that has gears in it is not something I'm too excited about doing it's something I've never done before at least not on a, a Kato locomotive like this or a motor car so I'm going to do a little bit of investigation and find out what the proper procedure is for this particular model because there's different procedures for different Kato models. Uh, it might require I take off the shell and come, and come at it from the top. It might require that I remove this truck. So I'll go discover that and get back to you and we'll install this motor decoder and see how it works. So after consulting the web and finding that the best resource to cover the decoder installation here is indeed the Japanese N-Scale Forum. I've discovered from people who know more than I that you do need to remove this truck to install the decoder. The way it was described is you got to gently apply pressure and move it away from the sides, uh, from the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt that. I'm going to videotape myself doing it in the process and let's see what sort of disaster or mayhem results. So I'm going to take this, twist it away, give it some pressure. Yeah, nothing happening that way. Let's try it the opposite direction. Well, I'm right handed, so it's actually easier to do it this way. Move it around a little bit. I know you can't see much of this, so I'm not sure how much this to actually share. You kind of see a little catch under there. It needs to come out. Maybe I need to move something aside. There we go. Wow, that worked a lot easier than I thought. So, all I did was put some pressure. I'll show you on this truck. I just put a little bit of pressure here, pushing that way, and it just popped right out. And there we see it's out. Hopefully, I can get it back together again. You see the little axle guy there? It's going to go back on that flywheel there. Well, now we're ready for the decoder install. This should be easy from what I understand. The side with the short strips go this way, facing the motor which is below the contact strips, which are right there where the long pieces go. So here we go. Flipping over, correct orientation. We're going to slide it down here. And gently push forward. And voila, there's kind of a little groove it sits in. So that should be it. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Let's put it together and see what happens. Okay, now let's install this guy back to where it belongs. I'm going to put that in there, and the flywheel the axle fits in there somehow. Well, let's see, that's, this could be trickier than I expected. There, uh, there must be a better way of doing this than what I'm doing. Well, somehow, I got it back on there. And it looks like the gears are turning, so it looks like I've got it successfully installed. Now to check out my installation and see if it works. <laughs> So 
So having once again removed the uh, trucks, I'm going to attempt to take a couple of pieces of small styrene, which I've already cut, right here, and insert them underneath this contact strip, and then place the decoder on top of that, and that will force uh, more contact between the uh, decoder tines here on these forks and the motor and the contact strip from the track. I expect it's going to be a little bit tighter. Not so much as you'd think. And I actually wonder if that's as far in as it should go. I don't know. I'm going to check to see how far in. I wonder if it should, doesn't look like it would go beneath the flywheel. It stops right before the, it feels like there's a stop there. But I think that's good enough to test out now and see if I get a different response than I did the first time. So, I am really pleased to say, and a huge round of thank you to Captain Bolivius and uh, that that solution worked. Inserting those little strips of styrene underneath these contact strips was the problem and I now got good contact and it's working. Now I just need to figure out what's going on with the lights from the function decoders and the cab cars but the motor car is working on an address 3, put it on the layout, it took off like a rabbit and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to put this uh, cover back on and we'll uh, continue with uh, giving the whole thing a test run and see how it works and uh, obviously you get the little tongs back in here a little bit forward of where you make sure it's all set yeah and it should snap right back into place should but not mm-hmm mm-hmm have I got it in backwards by any chance let's just try it backwards just <laughs> just to see if I'm crazy now I'm pretty sure I took it off that this way because I have this here this little bump that goes to the the motor car and I believe when I took it off the arrow was facing that direction so I'm gonna go forward with what I recollect when I disassembled it and just fidget around with it a little bit there we go yeah. Now it's time for the report card for the Kato E3 1010-222 Shinkansen, Tsubasa Shinkansen. How does this uh, train set stack up? Well, on appearance, it's really great. I mean, nice job. Um, Kato has excellent standards these days, and I don't think anybody will be disappointed. However, I don't think it's anywhere near exceptional. It's not certainly at the very top of the line. So we're going to give it a four. That's great. Good job. Certainly not exceptional. In terms of performance, I haven't had it very long, but in the test run I did have with it, it performs as uh, smoothly and as quietly as you'd expect from any Kato locomotive or train set. So I think I'm going to give it another four. Um, I won't give it a 5 yet, maybe I'll change to a 5 in the long run, see how it holds up over time, and once I do some fiddling and adjusting of the decoder, because right now the decoder is at its default settings and it's a little bit rough. So this could potentially be a 5 on terms of, in terms of performance, but I'm going to put it at a 4 for now. In terms of conversion, it's advertised as DCC ready, and in some ways they make it very convenient and very simple to add the decoders to both... Uh, both of the end cars and the motor car, but in other ways it's very difficult. There's no instructions provided, there's no clarity on how to do it, and you do have to resort to the web to get English language instructions on it. So even though it's DCC ready and even though it should be straightforward and very simple, as you could tell from this video, it was a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to give them, well, I'm going to give them a three. 
they're trying. It's certainly not difficult. It is strenuous and, and well, you know, I would almost give it a two too. This is I'm on the fence here, really. Um, I think when you advertise something as DCC ready, especially if you're new to the hobby, you expect it to be plug and play. And as you saw from the demo, it was anything but plug and play. I had to refer to the internet a few times, and thank goodness there's some smart people out there who've already figured some of this out. Cost excellent. Kato is always excellent value for money. Um, what the bang the the bang for the buck that you get from Kato locomotives and trains is just fantastic. So I'm going to give them huge credit for that. So overall, I'm not going to give many bonus points on this one. I think it's a nice locomotive, good job, um, uh, and certainly on the upper end of scale of quality. So overall, I'm going to give it an 11 plus 5. They got a 16. That's not too bad. So 16 out of 4, score 4. Respectable, great train, nice train, good value for the money. I would recommend it. If you'd like more information and, and links to some of the um, forums and posts that have helped me convert this locomotive to DCC, please visit my blog at quintopia.blogspot.com. Otherwise, feel free to leave a comment or subscribe. And as always, enjoy your trains. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.